the figure. Look at the turn. Oh, that was brilliant. Luke Bruce. Gee, it's a good kick. It is a great kick. It's one for the ages. O'Brien to Candy. And then a goal. Lewis runs into the open goal. Thank you very much. The Hawks are back in town. G'day Hawks fans, good to have your company this first episode back. There's so much to recap in what's been a busy off-season, from the instant impact of Finn McGuinness to the prospects jostling for a spot on the list. So let's get back into the swing of things. Welcome to the first Hawk Talk podcast for 2020. My name is Nick Mason, and joining me is a man who I expect is super keen to discuss the big news of the summer, arguably the greatest predictor of a successful premiership campaign, the preseason time trials. G'day Tiz. What is that? Come on. <laughs> Don't you want to talk about Finn? You have to talk about Finn. It's a compromised trial. How? What are you talking about? Well, Smithy had the baby that week, like two days before the trial. Anyway, so, yeah, whatever, Finn. Oh, they the, they the, have another time trial yet, don't you've they? You've changed your tune, haven't you? I've gone from being really, really excited to being that guy who's like, wait, wait, you're too excited. Oh, so you have to temper your own expectations now. Yeah, and now... I've let the Grinch sort of in, and he won't leave. Okay, well, let's see if we can build you back up by the end of this episode. How about that? This is the news I wanted to discuss. The club reports, after a five-year reign, Hawks running man Isaac Smith has relinquished his crown with draftee Finn McGuinness, his successor. Oh, that was so good to read, Tiz. So good to see. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, So the top five for the 2.2K time trial, Mm -hmm. Finn McGuinness, Mm -hmm. Chang goth Yep, Isaac Smith... He's third, not even first or second. That baby really took it out of him. (laughs) (laughs) Will Golds and then Harry Jones. Okay. Now, most people would be like, oh, that's so good, that's great. But I look at it and I go, wait, there's a 31-year-old. Yeah. And then everyone else is under 20. (laughs) That's right. What the hell has the rest of our list been doing? Well, that's true. (laughs) I mean, Finn probably... Where's, Where's Skulls? Where's more? Well, Scully's in the other list. I don't know about more, but Scully's in the top five uh, 11 by 200 metre sprints. And he's number one, so I don't know if you could be too hard on him. And and McAvoy? <laughs> McAvoy actually did quite well. Yeah. The CJ and Big Boy were the standouts, as well as a PB for Warple, which is good to see. O'Meara, Lewis and Hartley were strong in the sprints. Uh, we should give you the top five for the sprints, actually. Tom Scully, Jagger O'Meara, Mitch Lewis, Harry Morrison, and Sam Frost. Much better group of names, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah. Because, I mean, you look at the first one, the 2.2K, I mean, the only starter there, the only clear starter is Isaac Smith. Yeah. So and, I get where he's over from. the hill. <laughs> yeah, he's settling down, having kids. <laughs> <laughs> We've established a theme, I think. Yeah, it's also, there's a lot of light bodies in that top five. That's true, yep. Anyway, nothing to uh, pour cold water over everything, but... Well, uh, you seem to want to. I've got to build your spirits up. Let's see if we can do just that. How about we start with some social media stuff? Apple Podcasts, you can rate and review us there. We've clocked 225 ratings. That shot up over the summer. Did it? It did, yeah. We've had a few reviews as well. First one here from Jono. Cheers on an entertaining and thoughtful show. I love the opinions and insights you bring to us. Keep up the good work, boys. Go Hawks in 2020. I haven't been as keen to see our improvement since the early Clarko years. Bit frustrated there with the latest results. Not playing finals. (laughs) We're an impatient bunch, (laughs) Hawks fans. The three-peats positively agent at this point. And there's a spot up for grabs in the eight because Essendon are done. Oh, yeah, they're going nowhere. It's so good. Can you believe they made the eight last year? That is an absolute joke. Honestly, I forgot. When I was I'd doing say, the fixture for this year. That's what I'm saying. I, was like, I, mm, I forgot about that. The thing you can't forget, though, mate, is that they lost that game. So it kept the streak alive. <laughs> that's the only reason I want to remember it. <laughs> anyway, oh, have you heard the latest about, before we move on, Joe Dunaher? Out for half the season? Yeah, pretty much. He let the other half wait till later, I imagine. Is he doing a uh, John Patton? Just getting himself fit and firing for the next club? It's a bit sad, really. But is it? That's Dodoro all over. <laughs> a bit sad. Well, I'm not one to argue with that. Uh, Do you want to read out the next review from Jiggy Stoon? Insightful stuff from two fellows who obviously live and breathe everything Hawthorne really enjoy listening. Well, we thank you very much for that, Jiggy Stoon. And we heard from uh, What's Happening. An interesting spelling of that too. As a new convert to all things AFL, welcome. And nailing my colours to the mast for the Hawks, 
welcome. This is a great way to follow the goings on at the club and learn about the history of the club. Professional insights, perfectly balanced with humour, makes it every podcast a gem. Keep up the great work, fellas. You keep up the great work, sir or madam. Well done to you. Thank you for the lovely review. A new convert. A new convert. Can you imagine learning the game without having grown up with it? That is a disaster, isn't it? Yeah, because you'd be expected to learn it a lot quicker. As a kid, you're allowed to bugger bugger up the rules for years. Yeah. In fact, you're not really exposed to all the rules until you attend a grand final and you (laughs) realise there are no rules. Um, In fact, there's a sneaky different set of rules for certain (laughs) grand finals, 2016. 12. Oh! Uh, (laughs) Jeez, you're in a mood, aren't you? Oh, yeah, I'm doing well today. Yep. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> uh, you can follow us on Twitter as well, at HawkTalkPod. We're nearing 2,000 followers. What a milestone. Let's reach it before the start of the season. Get everyone on board. Get your fellow Hawks fans on there, at HawkTalkPod. Find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash HawkTalkPod. Now, this is pretty good. We surpassed 1,000 likes on Facebook over the summer, so we thank you so much for your support on that one. And uh, Patreon as well. You can subscribe and support the show. Patreon.com slash HawkTalkPod. Tiz, we're going to talk about something special that we've got coming up for uh, not only Patreon subscribers, but they uh, get in on the ground floor, so to speak. So we've made a guide over the summer for the season ahead. Yes, the campaign to come. We've previewed it. Every single player on the list we've written a thing or two about. Except for number 38, which is still vacant. <laughs> That's right. We're waiting on that. We'll get to that soon. But uh, yeah, this has been really enjoyable to put together and we'll make it available soon. Uh, probably first to Patreon subscribers, patreon.com slash hawktalkpod, and then uh, to the wider Hawk Talk Pod audience. So keep an eye out for that. What I'd say is it's kind of like an AFL record, but for Hawks fans. So it's yeah, one-eyed Perfectly Hawks one-eyed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You'll enjoy it. It's a great read. Uh, we look forward to putting that out. So uh, yeah, keep an eye out for that. It's a bit of fun. And as you alluded to, Tiz, one of the reasons that it hasn't come out yet is because we uh, we can't finalise anything. So we've got an Irish boy hanging around the club, and uh, we've also got Minchington and Cassa running Let, around. Let's and... start with the uh, the report from AFL writer Mark McGowan, who uh, reports that Hawthorne could add a third Irishman to its AFL list. You'll like that. Is there a quota? Because uh, just... <laughs> you'll add more than three. Oh, what? So it's like a rookie system or something? or I don't know. I just imagine that if they're going to do all these other things in, in AFL, they'd certainly have rules about just how many Irishmen you can have on a list. They wouldn't want a team becoming too Irish, obviously. <laughs> no, mate, they're stuck on halftime breaks. <laughs> Don't expect them to go that far. Uh, the Hawks flew the teenage rugby prodigy uh, Finn O'Hara. I'm going to say, is that how you pronounce his name? Finn, Finn O'Hara? Yeah. Or Fion. I don't think it's Fion. Okay. I'm going to say Finn. Finn O'Hara to Australia for a closer look. It's been reported that the club was in contact with O'Hara and his family for multiple years. Now, Hawthorne are following a similar process that they did in uh, wooing and eventually signing Nash and Glass. You're right. It is Finn, not Fion. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you work that out? What did you do just then? It's I, You seem to do, not not even do anything with your computer. I just typed in Fion into Google and it said it's pronounced Finn, not Fion. <laughs> Okay, well, geez, that was subtle. I didn't even notice you doing that. But there you go. Mystery solved. Case closed. Uh, he's an athletic midfielder who plays Gaelic football for Westmeath. The Hawks can sign O'Hara for the 2020 season. As per a little-known AFL rule, a Category B rookie can be included on a club's list for the current season up until June 30, so long as we have a position available. And tis, we have a position available. But that means there's three Category guys Bs. going for the one spot. Is that right? Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, it would appear so, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, competition is hotting up. That was reported by Mark McGowan, uh, and now we've got... Well, I doubt you'd come all that way and then join the Box Hill list. Mm. But there's a lot of guys, or there have been a lot of guys, at uh, the Box Hill training, which um, which there's a little bit of embargo on reporting because the list isn't finalised and uh, That's they're still right. negotiating with a number of these boys. But I'm looking forward to bringing that to the pod. Darcy Casser has been one of them. Hawthorne's looking at him, uh, throwing him an AFL lifeline after he was overlooked in last year's NAB AFL draft. He's 18. Basically named the unluckiest player not to be drafted. That's so, right. That was the raps on him. Yeah, halfback flanker. Now, you might be wondering, Hawks fans, about the deadline for this sort of thing. We have until March to replace any remaining list spot that we have. We only have the one, it seems like, uh, opened up via long-term injury. Now... As of today, it is. I'm hearing, uh, I think it was even Mark McGowan that reported this, that Kassar left the club some time ago 
And so Minching- he hasn't trained since before Christmas. Yeah, Minchington has remained behind and continues pushing for his spot. Is that sort of tipping their hand a bit? Is that alluding to the fact that the Minch has got it? Possibly, but um, they seem to love Minch. Why? <laughs> I'm not sure. Is that harsh? He, he must do all the right things off the track. I mean, they've had their favourites from time to time. He's got to do... Raiden the- Tallis was a huge favourite of Clarko's for a long time. Well, Minchington only needs to do the bare minimum on the track, which is not get injured. That's his ultimate obstacle at this point. Well, remember we had Luke Meadows come out last year and he yes. played in the practice games. So yep. that, that could happen with uh, Kassa again. Or, But, it, I mean, I was looking forward to them going toe-to-toe a little bit, but yeah. perhaps that won't happen. Um, of course, Luke Meadows has gone home now, so... Oh, is that right? There's been a lot of changes at Box Hill. It's there has, a yes. Very, very different team. Any good? Hang on, I've got a list of the ones I can talk about. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> the, the so-called embargo is in effect. Isn't that funny? <laughs> anyway, we've got is, Trent yeah. Minot out of uh, Essendon right. VFL and um, Josh DeLuca, who was picked up in the mid-season by Carlton, Carlton and then yeah. uh, found to be excess to requirements in that Very heavy strange. set midfield that they already possessed. <laughs> yeah, tough to break into that midfield. But there's some other players hanging around the club that um, could have immediate impact for their uh, VFL premiership hopes. So it's really still interesting times as far as our list is concerned. And uh, I guess we won't have to wait until too much longer, being that March is the deadline. Is there anyone that you'd like more well, than the Well, the Ruckman. Other? The Ruckman. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting how that's been completely overlooked, even to this well, point. Po- probably not on the Hawthorne list, but certainly mm. on the Box Hill list to give Reeves a chop out. Yes. So there's a lot of leeway there for Box Hill. No, I get where you're coming from. I'd only recommend it for Box Hill, but, you know, we lost Pitto and just haven't bothered to replace him. Interesting. Well, I'm not sure that there's a lot going around that we figure is uh, worth the trouble. And perhaps mm. we're just waiting for... Someone to drop off another list elsewhere. We do have two more opportunities to, to draft. So yep. if there's any injuries, of course, that'll free up places, and we know that can happen over the summer. Hey, speaking of Ruckman, though, one of our Ruckman led a band of Merry Hawks over to Coryong and Buchan. It was Johnny Segler. Yeah, bought his own tractor. Yep, took the family tractor out to the scene, uh, helping with bushfire-affected communities, which is so good to see. It was good to see the relief on that man's face when he was interviewed. Yes, yeah. He had a hell of a fencing job ahead of him. Yeah, what was it? Around about 10K of fencing done yeah, by yeah. the club and not only players but staff as well. That's right, yep. Big team effort from the club to get down there. And uh, no uh, fanfare, no media fanfare whatsoever. They just sort of went and did it, went quietly about their business. As the age put it, the Hawks pitched in unobtrusively, eschewing publicity, so real work is done while they're there, mending spirits and fences. That's part of Clarko's ethic, isn't it? That uh, we are in a community and... Yeah, well, he seemed to be the first one. You reach out to people when they're in need. He seemed to be the first one on the scene. That was the first inkling that we might be doing something, is that some of the locals... He was downing beers with locals. (laughs) That's right. And there's a story, uh, I heard it uh, on the ABC, uh, ABC Radio. I had a guy call up. It was one of the fireys who basically said, yeah, I got a call from Clarko and I thought... It was a mate pranking me. (laughs) It wasn't actually showing up. It was Alistair Clarkson in the end and... uh, I mean, what a what a good thing to do uh, after what a difficult season it's been for all of these communities. And uh, it's not where it ends either. We've got our practice match against the Saints for bushfire relief as well. Now, I thought that was before the pra- the actual match we have for the Marsh Community Series or Challenge, Ooh, whatever it is. No, but it's, it's actually it's, the week after. That's right. Yeah, it's a week later. It's out in Morwell on uh, Friday, Feb 28th. So they're thinking outside the box at Hawthorne. They're sending all the players out to get a job before Christmas. Yep. And now they're telling them to grab their stuff and we're going fencing. And Shields is getting on the mic today, basically saying that connection is super important to the group. That's clearly been a focus behind the scenes. It's something they've really tried to cultivate and focus on this year in the off-season. Is it a way of looking outside yourself? Is that how they're doing it? Or what's what's Clarko going for here? I mean, obviously there's... It's a two-edged thing. Yep. He wants to help the community at the same time as him, as uh, galvanise this group together. Yeah, yeah. I think um, think you've summed it up very nicely. I think it's just win-win. Um, you have a thing that you want to accomplish for your team, and then you look around and then you say, "Well, we can uh, we can do more than that. We can also help." Yeah. And so, why not? If you can do that, if you can achieve what you want to achieve for your club and do good for the community, why wouldn't you do it? 
So there and you also, go. I imagine it makes them appreciate being footballers a hell of a lot more. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Because I, I was thinking that myself. Like as I was watching Vision of them building fences, I'm like, there are some blokes here that are probably going to be way out of their depth and not fit for this kind of work. Oh, definitely. They don't know what they're doing. I mean, McAvoy looked right at home. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Look, it's good that everyone got out there and uh, all for a great cause. And as will be the... Uh, the practice match against St Kilda, 4pm, Friday 28th of February. If you want to head out to Morwell, there's your option there. Uh, we'll be going to the State of Origin game that, yes. that same night at Marvel Stadium, which should be good. No word on the sides yet, is there? No, no, there isn't. Uh, wasn't it a maximum of three from each club? Am mm, I yep. hearing that? Yeah, I thought that was the case. Who do you want to see running around for the State of Origin? Oh, um, Ruffy, Virtual. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. Uh, you know, it's just a charity match. I don't think there'll be any venom in it. It's, I hope not. It, it should be like those exhibition matches they have in soccer where they just, yeah, you know. My great wish for this game is that it's like the EJ Witten game. <laughs> I just want it to be a complete piss take the whole time and everyone's just having fun because, you know, the point is like not... A, like a self-aware AFLX. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> There, the players had to pretend it wasn't a piss take. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, dear. No, I, I hope they take it in the spirit that it's intended. It's just purely there to fundraise and help these bushfire-affected communities. And to that end, just have fun. Have a laugh. I want to see the players with smiles on their faces. I guess for my own selfish wants, I would like to see uh, Warple running around. Okay. Hashtag Warple Watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wingard. <laughs> <laughs> People are screaming at the podcast at the moment, <laughs> like anyone else, please. Yeah. Uh, um, but who would you pick? Name name three off the top of your head that you'd be happy to play in this match. Well, I mean, the most recent All Australians are Gunston and Bruce. So okay, and obviously Mitchell, but he wouldn't be there, so they'd mm. be the the two that would probably go up. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, Bruce is a country boy. I don't know about uh, is Gunston. No, I don't think so. Not that it really matters, but I just thought, you know, in terms of blokes that would be really putting their hand up to play and do it for a good cause, that Bruce would be one of them. Hmm. Well, he'd be in the Allies, Bruce, wouldn't he? I mean, do you care about the allegiances? Do you do you really care who wins? Or Well, I'm old enough to remember going to the uh, 2008 <laughs> game. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this has come up before on this podcast. That was think, a great actually. game. I really enjoyed it, yeah. actually. Yeah. I wish State of Origin would come back, but then again, I'm very protective of our players as well. I wouldn't want anyone to sustain an injury or anything yeah, like no, that. Yeah, State of Origin, it'll never die because they make the under-18s do it. So oh, right. yeah. That's true. That's yeah. true. Now, we've had a few feel-good stories about the club, so it's time to take the tone down. What do you reckon? <laughs> yeah, all right. I mean, it has to be mentioned. Uh, Hawthorne and the scourge that is gambling. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you can just take us through the start of that article, it'd be all great. right. Yeah. No yeah. worries. We'll do. This is how it reads because uh, you know, obviously, it's all in the context. Yes. According to the Age, Hawthorne Football Club's dependence on gambling revenue has landed the club in court after a violent armed robbery at one of its lucrative poker machine venues. Ridiculous. The fact that the focus is on the football club and not the people armed and robbing a place is just wild to me. Yes, well this is um this is the best example of fake news we've had against the club for a while. <laughs> it's a very cheap drive by I feel. I just don't appreciate it. Cuz people know, people have listened to this podcast, they know where I stand on pokies, but nevertheless, this is garbage. This is terrible journalism. It's not though. That you, is that is mean? actually really good journalism. Oh, in terms of what it's trying to in, do. In terms of he actually got that published. And now we're speaking about it. So, I mean, yeah. um, maybe I should tip my yep, hat no, to him. No, keep chewing on the bait. Yep. That's a, <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, they got a fair bit out of it because then uh, the freak, James Morrissey, had something to say to back this all up. Yeah, it wasn't. It didn't hold together all that well. No. But... Uh, I, feel, I feel like it tried to go for the jugular and didn't quite get it. Well, I, I don't think he's... He really wants to go for the jugular. No, well, he did bring up. I mean, he the has pokies. a lot of love for the club. I can understand his yeah. his mixed messaging there. He brought up the pokies at the AGM, though. But I think everyone's fairly united in saying we don't. If there were a better alternative, yeah. we wouldn't be involved with pokies. Having said that, you know it's still legal. Yeah, it's a it's a scourge on the community. Yes, but in this case, the money that's being lost is actually not being lost to the community, we get things out of it like half the 
club going up and building fences. Yep. Whereas there are other, I mean, they're not going to get rid of the license just because Hawthorne gives it up. It just goes to someone else because the government's yeah. too heavily dependent on all this gaming money. No, I understand that. For, for me, it's a point of I want to be proud of what our club's doing. And this is something I can't support. But you are right in saying that the money facilitates, you know, goodwill acts such as the one you mentioned. It facilitates the building of our uh, community centre down in Dingley, Social. which is a community centre. Cha ching. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just, and many times in society, you'll see that uh, these kind of things sometimes good comes out of bad acts, and uh, we'll extricate ourselves eventually, but. Until well, we yeah. haven't got the added financial pressures of building, anyway, it doesn't matter. Look, it, this is it, uh, this take... is all crap. This is all just <laughs> churned up by this no-name journo. No. Oh. <laughs> and uh, Hawthorne is on the record as saying they're going to get away from it. So that's enough. Do you want greater assurances that they are going to get away from well, it? Well, I asked for that last year, but as everyone's jumping on my back and telling me that <laughs> was a good thing to ask, <laughs> I think I'll just shirk that. All right. Fair enough, fair enough. I mean, I, I would like greater transparency. I, as I said at the time about the AGM, when the issue was brought up, the Hawthorne Town Hall was incredibly silent on this issue. You got a lot of members in the one room and it didn't really have a lot of coverage. It didn't have a lot of support, this whole pokies uh, divesting thing. So, I don't know. I, I hope the club is on its way to getting rid of them and that why aren't they having a crack at St Kilda? They're shit house and they've got them. <laughs> yeah, they're doing nothing good with that money. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying I'd like greater assurances that, that there's a plan to move on from them. And I'm realistic about it. I believe, it. Jeffrey, there's a plan. Yeah, you believe Jeff Kennett? Yeah. Okay. He doesn't have a huge financial interest in one of the companies that services <laughs> all the gaming machines. Anyway, so... And uh, when the people are down their luck and they fall into a big black hole of depression... Is Beyond Blue to help. Oh, wow. Is that too cynical? That's terribly cynical. In any I case, mean, he's n- no longer involved with that, is no, he? No, no, I know he's no longer he's involved. But Look, you give with one hand, you take away with the other. Illuminati that confirmed. How life works? Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> that was way too far. No, oh. look, look, I, I don't actually mean that, listeners. I'm not all, all into the conspiracy theory sort of nonsense. No tinfoil hat thinking here. Not yet, anyway, on this show. Uh, no, I, I just I see that Dingley is the main obstacle. Once that's up, I hope it's time. I hope we're done with the pokies and we move out of that industry. That's all I'll say. But we talked about it last year, so I think we can move on. Hooray! With, with, yes, <laughs> Diz has been dying to yeah, for a long time. That. Yeah, we don't need that. And we've got lots of listener questions to get to, so you know it's a good thing if we the do. The first move one on. is about pokies. It's not good. No, no more pokies talk that I know of for the year. That's maybe for the year. Excellent. Well, mate, if they did something about it, we wouldn't have to talk about it. We don't have to talk about it ever. Yeah, I know. It's our, our show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We heard from Sean at Hawk Talk Pod. We finished ninth, and based on trade and draft period, surely we improved. We did not lose any significant premiership players, as has been the case in previous years. We added Patton, Frost, Mitchell, a fit wing guard, and Finn McGuinness. How far can we go in 2020? And by extension, Stalking Hawk at Hawk Talk Pod asks, top four or top eight, how good will we be? So I'm thinking top four. Yeah, you you tend to be a bit more optimistic in general than me, I think. I'm saying top eight. I, I won't be so bullish as to suggest top four. Okay, so we're going to climb one position. <laughs> well, when you put it like that... I mean, that. optimism, hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, okay. I didn't really think that one through, did I? When I say top eight, I'm more thinking just outside the top four. Okay. Not sneaking in because Essendon happen to be terrible, which they are. <laughs> Actually, I was reading that someone thinks that North are a really good go. You're doing this deliberately? No, no. And I see straight no, through No, no, he barracks for Hawthorne, and I listen oh, to his... come on. Who is this? Uh, he, he writes a blog. I can't remember what Oh, blog. a blog. Yeah. A blog, you say? Well, that's yeah. one step down from a Pretty podcast. Pretty sure it's a mongrel so... punt. I like, the mong- well, I like the mongrel punt, so look what you've done here. Yeah. Really throw me under the bus, because I like their work. <laughs> Why does he think that North are going to be any good? I don't know. He reckons they're great. He reckons they've got the right profile. They've got two good... Scoring forwards, I don't rate their backs very much, but uh, anyway. Well, you know, there's only two occasions I care about them, and that's when they're playing us, and we'll beat them both times. Yeah. So don't worry about that. Mm, I can't wait. <laughs> You're not convinced all of a sudden. Well, we've been reading through the summer that McAvoy is behind the ball. Seems that way, yeah. And uh, will be an absolute bastard for any forward entry <laughs> against us. <laughs> yeah. 
So he's there with Cicely. That bastard big boy Ben McAvoy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he will. I mean, imagine trying to avoid Big Mac. He's got a great awareness of where the ball or where the team wants the ball to go. Yeah. It's going to be shades of salmon. You, you want to know something? I, I, I've seen him take a mark or two in my time. Not only that, but he's got. <laughs> if he even if he doesn't, he just gets the hand to it, and there's yeah. um, Hardwick and Sicily and Scrimshaw yep. to mop up with lovely kicks straight yes. out of the back fifty. Oh, I tell you what. So we're in the top four. <laughs> and then when you look down those uh, those two hundred meter sprints, you have got Jager and Scully and yep. Lewis and Morrison. I don't yeah. think Frost will be running into the forward 50, but he no, could. He could, this, yeah. yeah. That's right. And then you've got Nash, of course. He'll be in the first 18, That's right? <laughs> All right. So you're quite bullish. Where do you have us in the top four? Are we just making the top four or are we really entrenched? Oh, deep? it all depends on injuries. I think this list is one of the best we've had for a while. I, think I would agree with that, yep. Even w- even when you look at the VFL, the team looks quite good. Yeah. So there's some depth there. Um, uh, there's Jones as well, in, mm-hmm. who... Who, although he had surgery over the off season on his shoulder, didn't he? Yes. Um, yeah. Even he... if Mitchell doesn't come up to standard early, which he may not, it's a long time off. Mm. Um, Jones is a backup there. I think the thing that I like about our list at the moment is across every line. If you start with our best twenty-two across every line, there's guys wrestling for spots. Like the, you know, if someone's down on form or they get struck down with injury or suspended or anything like that. You know, it's not impossible to to think of someone to just sort of swoop in and see what they can do. Can I just run through my best 22? Okay. All right, from the back line. Yep. Hardwick, Frawley, Stratton, Sicily, Frost, Scrimshaw. How are you feeling about that? There's no Burgoyne. <clears throat> All right. Well, I better address that. <laughs> Jeez, this didn't take long. This is the finals 2020 best 22. Okay. So... Hitting finals, I'm not sure where the Burgoyne's going to be there. I said this last year, and you had to go at me. Yeah, because it sounds good on the pod. <laughs> it's okay. It's definitely applicable this year. If it wasn't applicable last year, it's sure as hell this is this year for a 37 year old. I think I said it about Popolo in about 2017. I think you did too. Mm. So, but it's you, a good so point. Can I just jump People in? Ha- Some of our listeners have actually gone through the entire catalogue of our shows. They can tell us at Hawk Talk Pod. Yeah, tell and we're us. nice enough to remind me that I wasn't there when Buddy kicked his hundredth. <laughs> yeah, beautiful moment that during the summer. Love a bit of that. Anyway, please continue. So this is at peak Hawthorne. Right. This is the team. Okay. Hardwick, Frawley, Stratton, Cicely Frost, Scrimshaw, Wing, Scully, mm-hmm. and the other wing, Henderson. Ooh. McAvoy, Mitchell, Warple, O'Meara. That yeah, is the centres. That's a decent midfield. <laughs> Wingard, Lewis, Bruce, mm. Gunston, Patton. Walker? Are you no. saying Walker? It's either Hanrahan or my boy Nash. Really? But it's probably Hanrahan. I would say it's probably Hanrahan in, in that case, yeah. And then the interchange is Shields, Smith, Segler, and possibly Burgoyne. Okay. But probably Howe. Oh, okay. So how snuck in? Interesting. Yeah, well, he was very good behind the ball in a number of games last year. Well, once he got going to mature the, in the role. Once he got into the side, yeah. I, I, and this is the the benefit of doing a, a guide, like a preview of the year. You start talking about Dan Howe. Once he got into the team, he stayed there. So yeah, he had a couple of lacklustre performances earlier in the year, but he had some uh, really good efforts against. He, he loves it when he's. Backs to the wall. So yes. when we played Geelong, he performed very, very well. That tackle on Dangerfield. <laughs> oh, that was a good season highlight. <laughs> anyway, back to the questions. I got sidetracked. Yes, back to the questions. What was the question? We're By just the talking way, about do you reckon chances. that can beat Richmond? Do I reckon that can beat Richmond? Yeah. Yes. Good. I'm not going to say we'll pummel them. I think it'll be close, and I think we can win. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's what I'm predicting. Uh, let's. Uh, did we address those questions? I'm just going to look at my notes, listeners. Yeah, I think we did fine by Sean and Stalking Hawk there. It's time to move on to Cody at Hawk Talk Pod. How important is round one against the Lions? They've seriously had our measure the last couple of years, and I'm sick of it. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah, <laughs> me too. I think it's important to get off to a good start this year, and beating them, this mob straight up could launch a successful season. Well, it's a thoroughly different look, mm. uh, both at Hawthorne and at Brisbane. I think not having Hodge, huge problem for them in the back line. Agreed. Uh Daniel Rich won't look anything like he did. Mm-hmm. He'll go back to his regular old Daniel Rich. And uh, we should 
perform very well that day. At the G, I think we'll have really set ourselves. And uh, I don't know. I just I think it's going to click very quickly for us. I'm excited about our forward line in particular. I think that's that day, that afternoon is going to tell us a lot and it's going to give us reason to be excited, I think. It's good to have a team that we haven't performed well against mm. uh, because we'll be quite concerted in our efforts and not too overexcited at the start yeah. of the year. A lot on the line. Make a good start if we beat uh, well, one be, of our bogey teams. They perform pathetically in finals, so yes. I want to correct that very early. Mm. Uh, we heard from Lachlan as well at Hawk Talk Pod. It's round one against Brisbane. Who's lining up in the centre square for the first bounce? Now we're assuming that Mitchell will be Mitchell available. Mitchell will, yeah. Yep. So I reckon the midfield you just read out. What was that? Big Boy, Jager, Mitchell, Warple. Warple. Yep, I'm happy with that. Now, uh, speaking of Tom Mitchell, Chris at Hawk Talk Pod asks... When do you think Tom Mitchell will be fit and return to play? Is round one too soon or optimistic of a prediction? Well, it depends how he gets through the pracky matches, yeah. but uh, he should be confident enough to play. Well, the whispers coming out of the club is that, yeah, he, he'll be fine. It's actually tracking quite well. Which is very different from two weeks ago. Yes. Well, I mean, you know, we've heard info as well that he's not going to be right till halfway through the year, and uh, it's, these things fluctuate. I think Hawthorne has, has shown, especially last year, with, uh, yeah, say, the likes of Scully... Hmm. Good at keeping their cards close to their chest to the point where it seems like Scully's a bust, won't ever play again. Uh, he'll be back in six months. Oh, he's here in round two. Okay. So you just ne- never really know what you're going to get with Hawthorne. Kicks four in round six or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, that's whatever. Right. So, uh, oh, look, I-, I expect Tom Mitchell to be available. I- I'm not sure round one is that optimistic. I think, yeah, why not? I think it's realistic. We heard from JM at Hawk Talk Pod. Much of the talk has been about Tom Mitchell, but how will we cope? Without Jarman Impey for most of the season, I thought he was an incredible player for us last year, and his run will be sorely missed. What are your thoughts? Um, well, as a team, they certainly uh, corrected for Impey not being in the side. I think they did really well in that. A lot of that had to do with Wingard moving into the centre, but uh, mm. well, Impey had some fantastic matches for us. Yep. But it is one position where uh, quite well versed in terms of the list. That's right. I, I think. It's fortunate in that I think we can reasonably cover it. I think Impey's fantastic. Having said that, he'll probably come straight back in when he's ready. Yeah, probably. And I wouldn't hate it because I think he's great. Um, But I'm not that worried. I'm not that concerned. I think it's something that we can cover for. And we did so last year. I think we're in a better position to do so again this year. So uh, sorely missed. The old soldier thing, right? Yeah, I I think it is that. I don't know about sorely missed. It'll be missed because he is so good. But uh, I think we've got it covered. We heard from Ben at Hawk Talk Pod. Hi, guys. Great work with the pods. Thanks heaps. Who do you think will benefit most from the inclusion of Titch this year? Do you think Jager could be used more as a Dusty Martin type, as in a damaging forward goal-kicking mid? Surely this would have a positive effect on his durability. Yeah, that's that's what I got excited about um, <clears throat> when I was looking at who has a burst of speed out from the packs. Mm. And now you'll have Warple and Amira who will be able to get on the dangerous side of the pack. Yep. And that'll only create more space for the wingman. That's uh, right. As they move to cover the cover the um, negative space forward. But having said that, I think just having that get out kick mm. sixty col- sixty kilometer sixty <laughs> meter get out kick to a forward in Patton or Lewis, mm. and then them obviously balking and holding it up and to allow Poppy or whichever small forwards we're running with at the time, maybe Wingard's still resting forward at that point. <laughs> you know, that, that sounds like a fantastic play and also a play that works the percentages in our favour. It's also a play that works full stop because uh, not too long ago, I feel like we were trying that with Puopolo as the sole forward. <laughs> yeah, It's amazing that, you know, what a difference even one year makes because Mitch Lewis looks like he's coming on, hopefully he can pick it up this year. Then you combine that with Patton. And hey, presto, you've got tall targets down Now, forward. we haven't mentioned Timmy. No, we haven't mentioned Timmy. Timmy's an interesting case. Well, it's funny you say that. We got a question on Timmy in a, in a roundabout sort of way. We heard from Craig at Hawk Talk Pod. Oh, yeah. He simply asks, windscreens, what'll happen this year? <laughs> <laughs> oh, windscreens, O'Brien, eh? God, he kicked a number in the last few rounds of the year, so it'd be terribly tough to keep him out of the forward He line. kicked four straight against the Eagles. Yeah, he was very close to goal, wasn't he? But there uh, were a couple yeah. of good marks there where he just stood his ground and took it yes. against a premiership backman. Yep. So anything could happen for Timmy, but the fact that he's a swingman means he probably gets selected. 
Do you have uh, O'Brien in your best 22? I didn't. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't think you did. No. I, I have him in the best 22 for my round one. But uh, again, that guide will come out. You'll you'll see our thoughts on Timmy and the rest of the rest of the blokes. But uh, look, I, I think yeah, the forward line. We keep on going on about it. It looks really good, really very good exciting, indeed. very exciting. Uh, Daniel at Hawk Talk Pod, first Hawthorne player to make their AFL debut in 2020, and why? McGuinness, you're consistent because you did call that last year. I'm going to go just just for lols, just for a dark horse. I'm going to say Matt Walker. How many injuries are you predicting? Well, you only need Poplo to be out. No. Come on. Got Ross, Hanrahan, probably. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> They're yeah. all ahead of Walker in line. I did say it was a dark horse. <laughs> I need to <laughs> dwell on it. Jeez. <laughs> no need to ground me in logic and reason, Tiz. Burgon might even get back in. Yeah, Burgon will play forward. You want <laughs> oh, him to play it's forward. So, I've been calling for this for months. I think you'll see it. I think you'll see some forward cameos from Burgers. Yeah, that will ain't, uh, I think it will be interesting to see where Gunston's put. Because if he's yeah. put down the back line again, because we do have a plethora of forwards. Yeah. If Clarko's like, no, we want you kicking out of the back line, mm. I don't know. I'd love to see him Gunston back forward. And I think they need the leadership. Well, speaking of forwards, Patrick hit us up at Hawk Talk Pod. Who will be our leading goal kicker this season? Bruce. Oh, yes. I think we discussed this last year, actually. I said Lewis. I mean, is it a shock? Of course it isn't. Everyone knows how much I like Lewis. So Mel went on to ask, which young Hawks will stand up in 2020? I've got my money on McGuinness, Jones, and Jacker. I think your money would be pretty safe. Yep, it pretty Looks much. pretty good. Have we got any, any more names to throw in there? Um, Moore should be looking at playing yeah. a fair bit. But I think he's injured at the moment, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, actually, I did hear that. I can't remember what, though. It's a leg complaint, maybe? Can't remember. All right. This is interesting. Now, Ben said, I'm putting this out there early, oh, but this... after watching highlights of Will Day, I think he could be a brown and gold version of... Who's that? <laughs> Say it. You know you have to. Heard? Yeah. What, like... Remember him? The blonde guy who put everyone on drugs at Essendon? He was a good footballer <laughs> once. Once upon a time, he was one of no, the best he, in the league. He was. He was very good. That's the tragedy of it. The you ta- have to acknowledge that. The time that. and space element to Hurd's game was ridiculous. So and, uh, We've already seen flashes of that in Will Day in his highlights. We have, and I have heard that the recruiting <laughs> department is unbelievably bullish about Will Day. Wow, okay. They haven't. Well, they don't seem to have been this enlivened by a recruit since <sighs> Buddy. Oh, come on. It's a big call. And I think that's wrong because I'm pretty sure they were head over heels for Cyril. (laughs) To be fair, they were head over heels for Cyril, yes. To be fair, you don't take a bloke at pick 13 for nothing. So they they must have liked what they had seen to that point. And now they're they're pretty confident that they nailed it, which is good. So will we see him debut? Oh, where? Backline? I'd have to be. There's got to be a spot. Or half forward flank. There's got to be a position available. I mean, if he's a dead eye dick kick, yeah, Clark, I would do the old Ben Kane and just try to keep everyone away from him and over the back, and he can <laughs> kick it from fifty. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, do you yeah, remember Ben yeah. Kane? It's a great goal, that. Oh, terrific! That's an obscure pull. I'll allow it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ben was a bit coy about that question. He says, "I've just got my brown and gold glasses on again." I think. What do you guys reckon? Well, I mean. Dare to dream. Yeah, dare to dream. Well, you've got to dream big, otherwise there's no point in dreaming. Hmm. Got to have big dreams. We heard from Trent at Hawk Talk Pod. I think we have a list good enough to challenge for a flag over the next five years. However, I don't see the next wave after that. We've seen players with the potential to be good role players, such as Nash, Moore, Cousins, Hanrahan, but only a couple with elite potential, such as Warple or Lewis. What are your thoughts? Don't you think the pool's pretty stagnant across most of the clubs now? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And also what I would say is... We've only just begun with a few of these blokes. I think it's way too early And to call. guys that look like role players, yeah. when they hit about 22, 23, they can really hit their straps. Yeah. Um, it doesn't look good now, but it can look good very quickly. Yeah, I mean, look at Sammy Mitchell. <laughs> and yeah, exactly Hodge right. dawdled for years. I remember those guys. They were pretty good. Yeah, so it's got a click. Um, one thing I will say is mm. uh, the development at Hawthorne is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I was reading about Jesse Hogan today. Yes. And if you're taking round one to Melbourne, you're in for a tough life. (laughs) 
<laughs> Mate, you're in for a tough life if you wear a scarf in the stands and no, support them. I mean, it's, like it, it, at every no, it's level, pretty, pretty ridiculous. At every level of affiliation with that club, it is a dead set nightmare. So, but we've got like half of the intelligentsia at Hawthorne during the three peat was out of <laughs> Melbourne. <laughs> Fagan, Clarko, yeah. they'd all been through the Melbourne ranks. Yep. And yet, they're still... Anyway, all I'm saying is where you end up for development has so such a big impact, mm-hmm. doesn't it? And uh, we've had Frawley come across. Now we've got Frost yep. and Scully. They're all ex-Melbourne. Anyway, uh, we heard from uh, Duck Soup at Hawk Talk Pod. Which is a better nickname for John Patton, the general or the giraffe? haven't heard that one. Bearing in mind Luke Hodge was already the general, well, I think that automatically cancels it out. And I've heard John Patton doesn't like the general either. Yes, you see, I want to go for trend mm-hmm. or trendy or something like that because it's okay. like a general pattern of a trend. <laughs> what do you reckon? You're operating on a different level. I reckon? like it. I like it a lot. John, trendy pattern. <laughs> Not bad, Tiz. Not bad. Let's see if we can get a hashtag going with that one. <laughs> then it'll be trendy. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, come on, you don't pay that one? No. Oh, that's outrageous. Uh, it was a long bowl already. We, we, I mean, we took the mickey out of that journal, and now we're doing similar stuff. Anyway, <laughs> now, how do you say this name? Uh, Pridgey. Pridgey asks, how long do you think until we get the General Luke Hodge back in a leadership type role? As we lose some of the strong 3 P D era leaders, it would be great having him guide our next generation before Cooper takes over. Another Luke Hodge question in a roundabout way. And that's Cooper Hodge, right? Yeah, that's Cooper Hodge. Uh, when is Hodge going to be back? Uh, a few years. Do you think it's giving breathing space to a few of these lads to take over the mantle? What do you mean? With all these 3 Peters, <laughs> sort of, you know, the leadership of the 3 Peters now yeah. gone. yeah. Right, so but they're also very not, hard to push them out of the way. Well, they're also not really gone either. Well, you see, you know, those well, Gunston camp- wasn't a leader. I mean, no. he's an on-field leader, but not acknowledged off-field. But there's enough players now that Hawthorne can effectively cobble together a photo shoot down at Waverley <laughs> Park, <laughs> celebrating the legacy of the club. I mean, that's pretty good. See, people are very worried about who leads after Stratton. Uh, I think we were worried about that. I think that might have been us. But I think it's, if any of those players were at mm-hmm. other clubs, yeah. they're obviously the leading lights. I mean, it's the context that there's so many decent leaders at the club Yeah, that it's hard to pick. We've still got all those other names that we mentioned when the captaincy was up for grabs that are still <laughs> sitting there. Will <Well>, they? <laughs> Obsessed is the word here. That's what <laughs> I'm going with. Alex at Hawk Talk Pod. With financial independence and sustainability being the end goal that the AFL wants for clubs, <laughs> I knew I wouldn't be able to get through it. Do you think we should aim to eventually have our own stadium for home games at Dingley? This... <laughs> What's wrong? No. <laughs> Do you know what I'd rather? I'd rather a stadium on a barge that you could... <laughs> That you could Careful. move around, yeah, get ideas. yeah. That you could move around Port Phillip Bay and have it in a different spot all the time. You know that'd be a lot cheaper than having a game at Geelong and one at Docklands. Just move the barge down to Geelong. The Dockers and the Blues on a cruise. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Got to think outside the box here. Anything could happen at this point. Anything can happen in the next month. Mm. The season hasn't started. They yeah. promise they won't change anything. But are you buying that anymore, Tiz? Not really. Not after St Kilda got so sick in China and they're thinking of pushing them back there. I can't believe they haven't scrapped those plans, to be honest. And the fact that three days after everyone was like, oh my goodness, this could be really, really serious. Yeah. The AFL were like, oh, actually a story came out from afl.com.au yeah. that was cautioning or alerting people to the fact that there may not be a game in China. Yeah. Yeah. Huge stakes, right? Yep. High stakes article. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> that they instantly reneged on. <laughs> We're going to monitor the situation. Guys, it's Port against Saints for four points. No one wants to be there anyway. The games Don't have make never them been do it. close. Now, GWS are going to America. Oh, they want to, yeah. Who are they taking oh, actually, with them? Actually, that was signed off, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a 2021 thing or 2022. But who are they taking? Well, I don't know. We've played in snow. Can we just put our hands up and... Do you want to go to LA? Yeah. Does it snow there? The Hawk Talk podcast is going to LA. (laughs) We'll be good. (laughs) 
God. Uh, Patreon.com slash Hawk Talk Pod. I'll just say that now if you're going to get us to Los Angeles. <laughs> We're going to need help. Book them now while no one's flying. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> See, this is the thing. Like, it would be a real popcorn eating moment just to be like, oh, let's see what the AFL does next about this. If lives weren't under siege and threatened by this virus, scrap the game. What are you guys thinking? Yeah, well, no one's bought tickets. I think it's okay. <laughs> you know what? Right you are. No danger there. No one's going to be there. Uh, d- did we discuss... Well, I didn't even finish the question. Uh, <laughs> Alex wants there to be a home game. Or he's floating the idea. I don't know if he's a passionate supporter for a home game at Dingley. He says, this would ensure a hostile atmosphere, lock in some wins, and shore up huge long-term financial security. I feel that we should discuss. Well, I think we have discussed. I think we've done that, Alex. Why do you want to so. leave the G? That would be my question. We're never going to get a 100K hang stadium. On, no, 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 hang on. He's not saying that we want to leave the G, is he? Yeah. What? Uh, what? Trading? As an MCC member, I think this is a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you something about Dingley. You don't need to put a stadium there to have a hostile environment. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello to all our Dingley listeners. That is awful. <laughs> I've, I've been there... Once, maybe twice in my life. So it was all for jokes, Dingley. Yeah. Good good people of Dingley. Dinglians. Wow. <laughs> you want a shovel? <laughs> I need to dig up at this point. Raj <laughs> asks, can you bring Clarko on the show? now? Do, do you know him? Do, do you have a contact? Do you have an in? Because we'll have him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine by us. Do you reckon he'd come on? I reckon we'd have to accost him. Yeah, probably. Yeah. He might come on when he's finished with Hawthorne. Yes. Yeah. I think one thing I'd say about that is... Uh, At least it'd be interesting then, because we'd get answers <laughs> that other people don't get. Yeah. It just wouldn't be a marathon of really pleasing this, really pleasing I, I that. I think we're at the back of the queue for that kind of post-Hawthorne <laughs> interview. Well, right now we are. Mm. But with people power, with people like Raj getting behind us, maybe we could make it happen. But again, probably not till he's done with Hawthorne, because... <laughs> Getting people from the club, that's a bit of a tall order. <laughs> Don't know if anyone realises that. Uh, we heard from Judy as well at Hawk Talk Pod. Will there be an intra club T20 cricket match playing at Waverley Park as well as an intra club footy match to raise funds for the Australian Bushfire Appeal? Oh, this is like Adelaide and Port Adelaide had. That was yeah, quite that's entertaining. Right. That's right. And they raised something like over a million. Yes. So uh, a resounding success for a good cause. I've not heard of us doing a cricket match. I know that we at least have our own intra-club footy match. I don't think it's to raise funds because we have that game against St Kilda designed for that. So, um, yeah, I don't know, Judy. It seems like we've, we've got that. Well, here we go. Here are the details here since we're talking about it. The uh, Hawthorne intra-club match, Family Day, on Friday the 14th of Feb. Got uh, Clarko's going to be there, and you can get the... Uh, Guernsey presentation happening as, as well. The event's going to go from 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. with the match set to commence at 5 p.m. down at the Rico Centre. Uh, I don't think that's a fundraising event, but it is nevertheless an event, and it should be fun. Yep. Happy Valentine's Day, mate. <laughs> be beautiful out there with the... Yeah, you join me out with there. With the girl, you know, straight off Tinder, off to Waverley. <laughs> Look, got your box of roses, some actual roses... Rows of scarves. <laughs> All ours. Uh, no, nah, why have they done that? Why do they make it on Valentine's Day? I don't know. Someone's lonely, mate. They just... Uh, <laughs> whoever's doing the organisation, did it last year as well, doesn't want to be alone on the well? day. Uh, yeah, maybe that's it. Oh, no, I feel bad. <laughs> well, get down there. If, if you manage to wrangle a date and get them down to the Rico Centre, hit us wrangle up. Wrangle is the correct term. <laughs> And Hawk Talk Pod, if you manage to do that, hats off. That is incredible. A king among men, if you manage to do that. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Also, a king among men, if you take someone to the family day in the intra club match, get them to watch people with really impress- impressive physiques running around. And, and still, still look good in their eyes. Yeah. <laughs> You're still with them by the end of the night. Kudos. You're a braver man than I. Anyway. Uh, That's oh, that, what you do at the movies, anyway. That reminds Except me also. they're not actually there. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me also, uh, the AFLW team, well, we don't have an AFLW team, Tiz. Still. I know. I want to say None on the it. horizon. 
I want to say it, but no, alas, it's the VFLW fixture. It was announced today. So get online and check that out. Uh, geez, what else do we... I think that might be the end of the show. Well, I have all this information about who Box Hill are recruiting. Do you want a list? Oh, so are we breaking the embargo, are we? Well, I mean, there's... And... <laughs> and what about... And how exciting is this, fella? Uh, yeah. Just to spite you, I'm not going to edit in the beeps. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> then I have to put the names in then Then you will have to edit them no, Anyway I'll, I'll just edit in redacted <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Damon Carroll Still doesn't want anyone reporting Until the list is in well, that well, maybe be should, too much longer Maybe you should come on the show And we won't have to release those names, Damien <laughs> <laughs> What a pity hill to die on <laughs> Uh, that's going to be it for the Hawk Talk podcast. Uh, just some social media stuff to wrap things up. Apple Podcasts, you can rate and review us there. Jump on there and uh, leave us something nice to read. We really appreciate it. Twitter at Hawk Talk Pod. We're climbing towards 2,000 followers, which is monumental. Join us over there. And on Facebook, facebook.com slash Hawk Talk Pod. We've uh, surpassed 1,000 likes. Let's keep that going. Patreon as well. This is the big one. Subscribe and support the show. Big things are coming because you've jumped on board. Yeah, now, most people have probably switched off because when you do your outro, they're like, oh, that's the end of the pod. How dare you? But <laughs> <laughs> but we've got a little announcement that we thought we'd tack on here. You mean, apart from the 2020 season preview coming soon? Yes. Okay. As we're probably reaching our end of time in Tassie, the Hawk Talk pod are travelling to Tassie to see Hawthorne play the West Coast Eagles. Over Anzac Day weekend. Yeah. And you're right, there's not going to be too many games left. As we have it in Tassie. Yeah, only about 20. <laughs> so I, I've never been. I've never been to see Ta- uh, Hawthorne down in Tassie. So this is going to be pretty awesome. We're taking As the pod a, on the road. It's going to be a great game. It is going to be a great game. Yep. West Coast will probably be contenders. I hope we are. So uh, it should be a massive clash. And hopefully we uh, walk away with the chocolates for that one. It's going to be a great weekend. And uh, if you are going down there, we'd love to hear from you. And maybe you live there and you're just going to wander over to the game. It'll be a fantastic weekend, and it's a, it's the first Hawk Talk Pod tour, in a sense, without actually doing a show. We'll be there, okay? That's the point. Anyway, there's plenty in the pipeline for the Hawk Talk Podcast, uh, and it's all made possible through your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash hawktalkpod. If you show the pod some love there, it means we can make it bigger and better. It's already begun this year, as I said. Tazzy's happening. 2020 season previews happening. That's coming real soon, and we have absolutely enjoyed and loved every second of putting that together. We can't wait to share it with you. Uh, patrons subscribed at the five dollar tier will get that automatically. Uh, so that's incentive to sign up. Sign up the five dollar tier, get all the bonus eps plus the guide that's coming out, and uh, everyone else. Well, it will be available quite soon. So keep an eye on all of that. It's going to be a big year for the club. I feel like we're both optimistic. It's been a, it's been a good energy to bring back for the first pot of the year, don't you think? We're, we'll be playing finals, I reckon. Yep. And we'll probably put a shovel in the ground at Dingley. <laughs> Your bold prediction. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we sign off, a uh, favour to ask you. While it's recording? <laughs> don't appreciate being ambushed in this way, but I don't care. I'm going to say it anyway. I'm off in Auckland. I feel a love. <laughs> I'm going to be away. For the uh, monumental clash in Moorabbin between the Hawks and the Saints. Yeah. On uh, Feb 20, I believe it is. So hold down the fort, would you? Set fire off a tweet or two. And... Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Is Come that on. So the... you can keep up with the game, is it? Oh. Well, it's not just for me, it's for the listeners. They want to know how we well, might see Matt Walker again. Yeah. Taking <laughs> speckies and yeah. bicycle we'll... kicks and. <laughs> Any, anything like last year. Yep, exactly right. So, uh, you yeah, know, it might be McGuinness. Yeah. Have I sold you yet? Yeah, Moorabbin's not. The worst place, I suppose. I could head down there. Feel free to stream it. I think it's on Fox Footy. So. Oh, okay. That's allowed. And no more Paul Ruse. Oh, yeah. All right, listeners, he's on board. We did it. <laughs> we are a happy team at Hawthorne. <laughs>